whoa. I bet you didn't see that coming. A water-cooled G3 modification. Hello, my name is Doug Hubble and welcome to Astrophotography Tutorials. Today I'm going to be talking about a water-cooled modification for a G3 camera. Normally there's a, a fan back here, but I removed the fan and I replaced it with a water-cooled block. Of course, this will void any kind of warranty you may have with your camera, so don't do this modification unless you're sure you want to void your warranty. But if you want to try it, follow these steps and I'll show you what I did. See if it works. So I've got uh, the water-cooled sink right here. I've got uh, some tubing. This is a special uh, RTV silicone sealant that's made for circuit boards. Uh, when, I, when this gets uh, going, and if this is uh, does cool it down, I'm sure there's going to be condensation that's going to come off of here, and I don't want the condensation to leak onto the circuit board. So what I've got is a special. Uh, silicone that will not corrode or eat away electrical components. So I'm going to use that to protect uh, the components. Also I have a little water pump uh, and what I've got is for the reservoir I'm going to try this uh, Coleman beverage cooler. It's a one gallon model. A test to see what kind of amperage this little motor draws. Another thing I need to check too is to make sure that this pump can reach from the ground up to the telescope have enough power to get up there. Okay so right now the uh, little pumps running at 0.37 amps right now and that's going up and over the chandelier with this uh, probably about Nine, nine feet in the air, but it still has a lot of uh, power coming out of here. As you can see there's still great pressure coming out, so I think it will do just fine in moving water from here up to the telescope there. So that's not very far. Now this, what I'm pushing right now, is going all the way up to the top over the chandelier and coming back down into here. Well here's the hose right here. I was thinking that uh, might have been eight or nine, ten feet, but uh, I forgot this hose right here is 20 feet. This challenge here is going to be modifying the G3 camera to remove the fan and put in a water-cooled unit. Now what I did is I took this apart and I found that the fan was a 40 millimeter fan so in theory a 40 millimeter cooler should just fit right in there I found this particular blue cooling block on eBay and it said 40 millimeters but guess what it's 41 millimeters so I'm gonna have to modify the, the camera to make this fit also, one thing you should note that this mod that I'm doing will definitely void your warranty. So don't try this and then expect Orion to honor any kind of warranty on your G3 camera. The only reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to find out if I can get the cooling down and have a more stable cooling temperature with the G3. I think that's the one thing that is lacking in the G3 is the cooling and if I can stabilize the cooling and get it down low enough I think that uh, the camera performance will be much better. There's eight screws in all that hold this front cover on. There's four around the fan and then there's four around the outer cover. So I'm going to remove these covers or these screws first to get started. Move, you can just easily pull the, the cover off of the G3 camera and then you can see the uh, cooling fan inside and the cooling fan just pulls back just like that uh, very easily. Now the next step is trying to get the cooling block 
to replace the fan. And when I look at this right now, this cooling block, like I said, is come measuring out at 41 millimeters, and this is a 40 millimeter fan area. But if you look real close right here, there's these little fingers that come off a little bit on this uh, area of the cooling fins on, on the camera. So I think if I just shave those off with like a Dremel, get that and shave those edges off, then I'll be able to set the cooling block right down inside there and get it uh, nice and flushed contact with uh, the CCD back here. Uh, now that I think about it more, when I start cutting this, what will happen is the shavings will fall off and the shavings might fall down onto the circuit board and cause some kind of short. So what I'm going to do next is I think I'm going to go ahead and put the silicone down into here to actually protect it. I'm sure some electronics engineers are probably looking at this going, oh no, don't do that. Put silicone over there. I'm sure there are some kind of cooling properties that belong to these devices or these chips that are on here as well, but I'm going to go ahead and put a thin layer of silicone on top of it. Again, I can't stress this enough. Uh, do this at your own risk. You know, I don't know if this is going to work or not, so uh, if you do this mod and it comes back to you and then your camera breaks on you, hey, well, don't blame me. I'm just giving it a shot to see if I can improve something. So. Uh, do it at your own risk, by all means. And of course, Orion will not honor any kind of warranty on any kind of mod you do to your camera. Goes without saying, but I need to repeat that to make sure nobody uh, thinks this is an approved modification. Silicone here is that it uh, definitely says that it's a non-corrosive silicone, okay? That's the type of silicone that you need. If you use a bathroom type of silicone, it will corrode and eat away your electric circuit board. So use something that is a non-corrosive silicone. I'm using like a, a thin wire tie to get in between the crooks and crevices of the circuit board. Uh, and when I, what I can do with the, the uh, wire tie, I've also been using uh, the flat head of a nail to help pack it down inside there. So whatever means you decide to use to put the silicone in here is your own choice, but I've found that using this uh, wire tie end right here works really good. It gets down in between the crooks and crevices and helps uh, seal it up real nice. After I've applied the silicone to the circuit board there, and uh, we'll see what happens. I'll let this dry out, and after it dries out, then I'll come back and I'll start working on cutting the fins out. Test as I went ahead and ran the uh, the tubing all the way up to the telescope here. So that's more than high enough uh, for what it will need to be when I actually get it running. And uh, the stress test with the ice, and there's still the good water flow. So we'll just let this run for a little while and see if it's still running at the end of a good couple hours. Here's the tubing and you can definitely see in a relatively short period of time the condensation that's uh, building up on the tubing. So there'll be no doubt condensation running through the uh, cooling block once I get that hooked up. Another millimeter out of here so I can put the uh, cooling block inside of here so the idea here is to get the Dremel tool and just shave off a little bit of these fins on the inside here. So let's give it a try. After I shaved off the, uh, the edges there with the Dremel, uh, put in some paper towels kind of like to help keep some of the dust and debris from going inside there as well. 
I, I probably have to f to finish it up a little bit around the edges, but I think it will fit now. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Now it fits in there uh, pretty easily. I'll just have to finish it up uh, with some, you know, fine filing, maybe right in the in the areas here. But it it looks like yeah, just shaving off that little bit allows it to fit in there. So that's that's what we needed to do.